Nobel gave a new proof of casualness of conjecture in 1990. Um, and basically, so there was a point in the proof that um, <coughs> where I used this inversion formula. And this is a, as, as we were kind of discussing at the end of the proof, at, at the end of the lecture, this is a, it's a simple algebraic fact. But if you think about what it means in terms of uh, category O or something like this, this is a, it's very mysterious. And this led Bainenson and Kinsborg to their cultural duality conjectures for category O. And Wolfgang Zergel was, was, uh, was interested in exploring these conjectures. And there he, it's clear in those conjectures that you want, so localization takes an intersection cohomology complex and produces a simple, so it, take, it takes a simple module to an intersection cohomology complex. And in cultural duality, it's kind of like a Fourier transform, and it should interchange simple modules, which are kind of like points, with projective modules, which are kind of like constant functions. And so you would like a, a, an equivalent that sends this, the intersection cohomology complexes to the projective objects in category O. And he found a way to do this without D modules in a purely combinatorial way. And therefore introduced these things called Zirkel bar modules. And then um, recently with Ben Elias, we are able to prove character formulas for the Zirkel bar modules independently of geometry, but very much using the ideas of Dicatado and Migliorini in the proof of the Dicatado theorem. And therefore one obtains a purely algebraic proof of Dicatado and which is heavily motivated by geometry, but you don't need to know any any geometry to actually follow the proof. It's just a lot of kind of community algebra. But you need to mean perverse sheets. <coughs> you need no no perverse sheets. You need to know what a bimodule over a polynomial ring is. Yeah, and you need to know a, a lot of coxenicot group combinatorics. <coughs> um, and also. Um, <coughs> So in some sense, uh, I mean, I'm, de I'm deep touring a little bit, but if you imagine um, you have rep theory and geometry, and then localization provides one way of going between these two things, and what Zergel introduced is another way which is these two are related to the Zirkel bar modules. So, so basically there's certain objects in community of algebra which, uh, which, from which the, both the geometry and the representation theory can be recovered. And this is an, also an extremely useful um, tool in positive characteristic representation theory, which is what I'm discussing here. So now we have G <coughs> BT, this is a reductive, this is a let's say semi simple simply connected group over the algebraic closure of a finite field. And this is the Borel and the maximal torus. And the question, every, everything in this talk, if we knew it for SLN, we'd already be very happy. So now we have the combinatorics as before. We have the right lattice of the torus. Right and we have WA, which is now the affine valve. <coughs> so it's a, it's a beautiful aspect of the theory that. Uh, in characteristic zero, generally things are controlled by a finite valve group, and if you go to characteristic p, things are controlled by an affine valve group. 
And so the picture they have in mind, again, great. And to pass to the affine diagram, we add Simple modulin characteristic zero, and there's a well defined reduction modulo p procedure that produces this file module. Reduction modulo p of simple highest weight module. <coughs> Is it finite dimension? Yeah, and it has the same character as the thing uh, as usual. <coughs> If, if instead you work over the um, over the distribution algebra, which is the analog of the enveloping algebra in character T, I mean the kind of correct analog, then you really take this module for the Lie algebra, take some lattice inside it, and reduce it by One can make this <coughs> that nice. So it's module over Lie algebra, not over. Group. Well, it's a module for the group. I want this to be the group. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so distributions, the algebraic distributions is precisely what allows you to exponentiate in character. Um, so we have rep, I mean, what we're studying is rep g rational representation. So representations which are given by regular functions on this matrix coefficients are regular functions on G. On G. On G. So this is an object in rep C. And so it is finite dimensional. And it's finite dimensional. And the character of delta of lambda is given by the bulk ah. I think something which is called one module. Sorry? Something which is called one module. I think this is dual while logic. Yeah. Yeah. And just as in characteristic um, zero, we have the kind of known object, which was the Verma module. This is the known object in characteristic P. And this has a unique simple quotient, L of lambda. Okay. I can never remember what's called a bar module. Yeah. So this is the bar module. It's actually would know. So the character comes from the usual defined character formula. <coughs> yeah, it's really the same. So for example, for SL2, the dual of this is just um, degree d homogeneous polynomials. Whenever you have some reasonable realization of your thing in characteristic zero, this is really just the reduction module. With some things brushed on the past. And then we have the irreducible um, <coughs> objects in rest G, which precisely the set that. This is I guess a shift theorem of Shabana. And just as in characteristic 
zero, we had the, the, the block decomposition that was extremely important. Um, the linkage principle. says that rep G is a decomposition. So it's a decomposition into orthogonal categories, but it's not a full block decomposition. Um, so gamma in um, the orbits on X star of affine bar group the P. So I'll explain what this is in a second. Intersection complex. <coughs> rep. <coughs> omega. No, rep omega is the full subcategory, so generated by L lambda. Million subcategory generated by all of these on lambda. And what's this um, P stretch? So dot P is the P stretch dot action, which is defined by basically conjugating by translation by rho and by dilation by P. So X dot T lambda is defined to be lambda <coughs> plus rho 1 over P X P <coughs> plus rho so I'll draw a picture of it. so in characteristic zero we shift so that minus rho is um, the center of what's going on. And here we do the same thing, so this would be <coughs> minus rho. And then we we delight, dilate our, our walls so that there's the distance is P between. So in this particular picture, where this is a bit of a line on signal-based type. But just, I mean, the most important thing for this talk is that just have a picture of So this would be zero. Zero, eight. This is minus rho. And then we have our dominant base here. And then we look at the, given any weight, we look at its orbit under reflections in all of these P-shifted, P-stretched um, hyperplanes, and then intersect it with the dominant. So I'll, I'll draw the orbit zero. one of these dominant alcoves as one, um, one single one. And uh, again, uh, you have x plus, it's the same as upper and lower index, right? Or are you have a new...
And then um, adding characters to zero, um, the basic question is the character for a lemma. And again, it's enough. understand the character of L next to zero. <coughs> Where now X is an element in W A such that X dot zero is dominant. And now it's I mean, it's easy to explain why this is about And there's a remark, so which I won't explain, but I find that this this is kind of um, extremely lovely part of the theory. That this the, the basic question is equivalent to the dimension of the simple um, FPG. So this is, I think, one of the most fascinating aspects of this theory, is that uh, you have you have the kind of approach that I've been talking about so far, which makes rational the ma rational representation theory look like essentially like characteristic zero. We're trying to understand to what extent modules break down in characteristic zero, but also we have this finite group lurking inside our, our group. For example, you know SLNFP or something like this, and knowing the simple modules for this group is essentially equivalent to, to this question. And so there's kind of fascinating, fascinating interplay between finite group theory and leaf theory. And Lustig's conjecture um, is the following. So the character Simple examples, uh, one sees that if P is small, very small with respect to the group, it's very unpredictable what happens. And also, this picture with, with regular weights and things breaks down. And so we should assume that P is not too small. And Lustig's original conjecture was equivalent to the statement that P is bigger than 2 h minus 2. So this is the Cox number. 
And later Cato pointed out, Cato proved the lovely compatibility of Lustig's conjecture with something called the standard defensive product theorem. And he pointed out that P bigger than or equal to H is reasonable. And now there's another proviso, which is uh, annoying, which is that if um, so I should say W0 here is the longest one. And then the proviso is that I'm not sure why I saw this yeah. This is less than or equal to picture, what we're doing is we're expressing one of these simple modules, for example this one, in terms <coughs> of characters that are known by the Val character formula. We're assuming that P is not too small with respect to H, so in this case P is bigger than or equal to 3. And that's exa exactly the condition that this zero weight doesn't lie on any, any of these hyperplanes. And the second condition is that our weight is not, so this describes some hyperplane up here and our weight should not be too far up in this direction. And you might say, but I need to know all weights to know all simple modules. But it turns out that there's a theorem, Steinberg tensor product theorem, that allows you, if you know this, this information, to deduce all, all characters. So that's the so the condition just conclusion the part of the theory or it's a part of the conjecture, yeah. So for, for much at, uh, this doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. So this describes a finite number of weights for which this conjecture is then to hold. And uh, and the remark this amazing theorem of Steinberg. Product <coughs> implies that um, if this character formula holds, so I'll call this the um, Lusty character formula, if LCF holds, then we can deduce all characters. Very good. 
Would you like to tell us this morning? No. <laughs> it's very, very beautiful. Though. <laughs> it's really interesting. I mean, you must be happy yeah. in a, a five-page, five very readable note on the iPad. But the basic, somehow, the, the if you think about, so this is another beautiful thing where um, where you have this interplay of kind of characteristics here on characteristic P. Um, basically, if you kind of periodically expand your weight, and the zero plus, and the one plus, P times lambda one plus, P to the M times lambda M, where all digits in the fundamental weights P minus one. So this is really, this is just if you just think about you write your write your um, you write your weight in terms of the fundamental weights as a p adic expansion of your weight, and then um, basically Steinberg's tensor product theorem tells you how to uh, write it as a tensor product if you know each one of the if you know the characters of each of the digits. And then Lustig's formula is a kind of iterative version of the Steinberg tensor product theorem uh, on the digits in your expansion. But it's a very funny formula because you kind of chop, you know, like if you have, uh, let's say, 42, which is you know, like mod 5 or something, then, or 421 mod 5, then in Lustig's formula you kind of need this character, this character, this character. Anyway, it's got completely <coughs> different <coughs> order. Yeah. So could you add several dates on the statements? Those six conjectures, 1979. Steinberg so tensor product theorem is 60, so maybe 60. It's actually like 64. 65. I don't know. Something like that. <coughs> um, is this five page which is maybe. Ah, uh, July this last year. Um, and then the third remark is an L listed character formula always be large enough. So Hannes and Janssen Zogel, Pasha Lusty, Pasha Barak and Saki, Lusty. Around about 1990. They would pass it through quantum groups and many things. And there's two new proofs of Lustig's conjecture for P large enough due to Federal Kapnikov and collaborators, and also due to Phoebe. And also there's an explicit. It holds, it holds for all X for the proof for fixed P large enough. You fix your root system. Then there's some enormous number that you don't know for which it holds about that. Okay. So the full yeah. holds for all x. For all x satisfying the For all x this equal. Yeah. But all x to the square is going to be sufficient for the large, right? No, x is infinite, it's affine bar So there's a set of the affine bar group that is independent of p, which is this, which describes the characters that you and at some point, as p gets very large, the character formula holds. <coughs> like, if you think about this picture, uh, uh, okay. the, the Janssen region moves at the same rate that these alcoves expand. And so the set of alcoves, which you know the character, is independent of p starting from the constant of the <coughs> This an enormous squared down. So for SL8, it has um, maybe 
eight or nine digits. Um, So Virgil's approach. You can see our O, which is South Ocean. running out of time, I will just tell you in pictures what it is. <coughs> so this is the category you mean? Oh. Yes. Oh. This is a sub-quotient of rational representations. Sub-quotient of rep zero. And in this particular example, You would take the full subcategory <coughs> consisting of these weights. So in this particular picture, <coughs> this guy is the side of the weight. And if you think about the vial modules, they will have composition factors only below. And so it makes sense to take a subcategory with consider consisting of all these red dots and modding out things that are not around this way. So we mod out this. And the point Zergel's point is that what you're left with is something that looks like finite, looks like category O for SL3 in character zero. This looks like Simple modules. <coughs> now they actually just define to the image of the um, Steinberg plus X row. And standard modules, which is defined to the image of the bar module. conjecture implies that the kind of Kaushnalistic conjecture should hold. The Kaushnalistic conjecture type motion. The Lustig conjecture. <coughs> uh, what means over bar? It means, so this is a sub quotient of this, uh. of this block, and I just mean take the image in the <coughs> image in sub quotient. So is this the idea implemented in, in, in the book? Sorry? Is this the idea implemented in the book by Jan? No. This is another idea. Yeah. Somehow, so the the book of Anderson, Jans and Zergel is finding a combinatorial model in characteristic zero that you can reduce mod p to get a part of of representations of G, so I'm lying with G1 T modules. Um, representations of G in characteristic zero, and so you can compare the quantum group with the character with characteristic P. So it provides a transfer between the quantum group and the algebraic group. Whereas this is much more like a little testing ground. Okay, Lucy's conjecture seems very hard, but there's this 
there's this nice place where we can kind of apply our intuition from characteristic zero to try and understand what's going on. And the listic conjecture implies that <coughs> is so you can think about this as a lot of things. And then Zergel. But this H X Y they just uh then using polynomial for elements of the affine value. This is for finite, now finite. Ah X and Y are finite, right? Yeah. So it's just usual question. Yeah, it's just lit like really it's, it's just the catalytic conjecture except now we're modulated. Perfect analog of Cushion's conjecture. Uh, but this is exactly Eight, eight yeah, yeah, and the same kind of listed polynomials that have appeared in the previous talk, finite. And you can make this, so recently um, uh, in joint work with uh, Simon Rich and, and Wolfgang Zogel and then recent work with Achar and Rich, there's actually a thing defined over Z such that when you tensor with C you get category O in characters to zero, and when you tensor with um, Z mod PZ, you get this situation. So, very nice. And Zergel says that this solidicity formula is equivalent. So remember from the last lecture I have these projection maps. It's equivalent to the fact that I as low as star of I C um, <coughs> X, <coughs> X <coughs> FP is semi simple. For delta, for this multiplicity, is equivalent. Thank you. Decomposition theorem with mod p coefficients. <coughs> <coughs> and 
and this is something that um, we've worked on a, a lot. So this is where we control our mouth and W following the capital. following kind of basic observation, which is that if f, so let's say that we have x tilde with x a resolution, so this is smooth and proper, this is smooth, this is proper. Then let's assume for simplicity that it's very small. There exists a stratification <coughs> of um, stratification x x lambda such that the dimension of the fiber. is bounded by half the co-dimension x <coughs> so if you look at the uh, proof of the decomposition theorem due to for example um, Benings and Bernstein, Lin and Gaba or, um, or Saito there's, it's kind of very difficult to see when it, when it holds and when it fails in their proof. Whereas in the proof of Nikatada Miyomi, they identify a geometric thing that's kind of controlling the geometry, which is the following. So <coughs> assume um, x lambda x zero is a point starter, and set f the fiber over x zero. So the picture one should have in mind is the stringer resolution for epsilon two. This is n in the minus epsilon two, and this is t star epsilon one. And we'd like to know does the decomposition theorem hold at this point graph? So uh, there's two there's two cases. So case A is that if the dimension of f is strictly less than half the dimension of f tilde, <coughs> i.e. this inequality here is satisfied strictly, then there's nothing to show. Or B, if we have precise equality, which is the case here. So this is exactly half dimensional inside the ambient space. Then the decomposition theorem holds if and only if the refined intersection form Which is so. I'll try and give some picture of what this is in a second. So this is defined on the the top the top homology of this fiber. So this is precisely the dim x tilde top homology of this fiber. Is non-degenerate. Yes. Modulate.
So this, I mean, here I could just equally write a molecule. Okay. As a basis, <coughs> given by fundamental classes. in the f-dimensional <coughs> components. <coughs> and basically this intersection form measures how do these components intersect inside the ambient space. So in the example, the fiber just, compo just consists of one component, which is P1, and it's where the self intersection is the same thing as the intersection inside the cotangent bundle of P1, which is minus the order characteristic P1, which is minus 2. And so this says that the function theorem holds you can only if <coughs> yes. So it's false for mod p coefficients, and in the semi-small case, this gives you an if and only if condition for it to hold. Basically, modulo one small technical. Uh, okay. So, so via Zergel, we must study. The decomposition theorem for maps of the following form. So these are so-called bot Samuelson resolutions. These are bot Samuelson. So these are not always semi-small, <coughs> but basically the same theory with intersection forms holds. It's just slightly more complicated to state. And so we need to study intersection forms. And so this is hard. So basically, if you're in the talk of um, Nicolas, um, he was explaining uh, what, the, what the thing you have to do in order to calculate entries in intersection forms is. And it's a, in general, it seems to be a combinatorial nightmare. It's extremely, extremely complicated. But there's been progress in very special cases. by the following people. So Braden, in 2002, gave the kind of first interesting example. So basically the first time <coughs> something came out that people didn't necessarily expect. And then there was this whole uh, effort to translate it into something more combinatorial. So this uh, so here, Dubolinsky, uh, 
um, Elias Cavallo. Elias. So this, I guess, So the result, so here if you want to compute an intersection form, you, it's, it's a, a number, you know, for any you know, entry in a matrix, it's a number of pages of quite complicated calculations. And at the end of all of this, there's a I have a computer program which can work these out in many cases. And so in some sense, at the end of all of this, there's a, there's an algorithm, but it's still very hard. And um, with with Shuha, we um, in 2013 we worked out a much simpler form, a, a much simpler form of what these entries are in a special case. And then the kind of so this allows interesting and it kind of involves in some sense dynamics on the cohomology of the flag variety. So on the cohomology of the flag variety you have certain operators that take you down and up and basically coefficients that emerge in this process give you torsion. And so it's a, it's a big machine for producing a lot of numbers for which the decomposition theorem fails. But a corollary of this is that any um, <coughs> entry in this in the setting group, any, any entry in a word I just mean entry of the matrix. There exists at any entry M, there exists a Watts Hamilton evolution of a shooter variety. allows you to produce many uh, many counterexamples for Lustig's conjecture um, around the bound as conjecture. And then corollary of this so basically uh, and it's very explicit. So if one gives the word <coughs> then the Schubert variety and the Bots Hamilton resolution are explicit. And you can write them down based on based on the word. <coughs> 
corollary with um, this is Joe Perth with Bob Rubich, Mac and Rowe, is that the for which the Lusky character formula does not hold. Um, rows <coughs> for SLM grows fa grow faster than C to the N for some C beautiful. So this is this picture that, uh, that Nico drew. As soon as it was the Janssen con uh, condition is not enough. It's not so, so the Janssen condition is not the issue. It's more the statement that um, P, so there was the Carte version P, <coughs> the plastic version was P bigger than Two. Yeah, this is not in this. Yeah, p greater than you know something something exponential in H is the only. So so this is um kind of bad primes. But the condition, but Janssen condition is is enough. Yes, yeah, so Janssen Janssen condition is just um. Yeah, I understand. It's, uh, kind of like basically, you just want to fix some set of alcos containing the so-called fundamental box, um, and then you would like a formula that holds uniformly. And so, n in that way. And so, the Carto version is additionally linear. And so the first counter example that I can actually produce is at 18, and there's a bad <coughs> time at 23. But this shows that it. You mean SL18? So SL18 is the first one for which I can show the effect. So before. We thought that this was the kind of unknown zone, and now we see that this unknown zone is kind of much, 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 much larger than it. But still, there's this very good zone that we, that we do have. And the physics is double exponential. It's like exponential, 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 exponential. Or something. So there's still a lot of gap between. There's a, there's an extraordinary gap between this thing and physics there. <coughs> Let's say at about 200, I, I hit a prime that's bigger than about 10 to 9. <coughs> Whereas Phoebe already hits this number at about 8. <laughs> <laughs> and I should say that this, I, I mean, I wish I had more time to explain this, but this is um, based on. So it's an extremely difficult question in number theory to say which prime numbers occur um, as entries in the semigroup in the word length. It's extremely difficult. But there's been recent progress on this um, problem by um, Borganga Mont Sarnak and also Golsafidi Sarnak. And this is based on recent <coughs> work of so I find it. So they proved this um, theorem about a theorem in number theory concerning the Ramus conjecture about uh, like two years ago. 
and it's and one can really just plug this theorem into their result to get this theorem. So, thank you.